A good quick explanation of the layers and classes system in Vectorworks is that classes are the what and layers are the where. Everything in Vectorworks exists in a class and on a layer. We'll take a look at classes first. By default, the only two classes you'll see in a Vectorworks document are the None class and the Dimensions class. As you draw most objects, they'll automatically be placed in whatever class is currently active. This is displayed both in the top left of the view bar as well as notated by a check mark in the navigation palette in design series versions of Vectorworks. If you wish to change the class of a particular object or group of objects that you've selected, you can do so in the object info palette under class. The same can be done with layer. Here we have a simple conceptual example of objects in different classes. The squares are in the square class, the circles are in the circle class, and the triangles are in the triangle class. The first thing we'll demonstrate is the ability of classes to make visible, invisible, or gray your various objects in Vectorworks in order to better display your information in a way that is easier to understand according to the situation. Both in the organization dialog box and in the navigation palette, at the left of our list of classes are three narrow columns. These columns control the visibility of that class and all objects inside of it. Here we'll make the square class gray and as you can see, everything in that class has become grayed out. We'll make the triangle class invisible, and all of the triangles have disappeared. Setting both of these classes back to visible allows us to see the objects again as they were originally. The second major use of classes are class attributes. Objects can have their attributes controlled directly by the class they are located in. This makes it easy to change the fill or pen style and color of multiple objects sorted cleanly by class. The class's attributes are controlled, again, by the organization dialog box and or the navigation palette. To enable this, I'll select the objects, and in the attributes palette, I'll select use class for the pen style and color, as well as the fill style and color. The moment I change the attributes of these individual objects to use class, they'll take on the attributes assigned specifically to that class. If you want objects that you draw new in a class, or objects that you move into a class, to automatically pick up the attributes of the class that you place them in, make sure that when setting up these attributes that you have use at creation checked on the top left. Otherwise, you'll have to set these objects to use class manually for each object as we just demonstrated. As you can see here, as I switch an object between two classes that both have attributes and have use at creation enabled, the object changes the instant it enters the other class. For layers, the visualization options work very much the same. Here we have a simple two-story building with a roof. As you can see, the same visible, invisible, and gray options work identically to the way they work for classes. Design layers, however, do not have attributes the same way as classes do. Instead, design layers are more intended for sorting out the where of an object. In this example, we have four layers. Mod Foundation, Mod Floor 1, Mod Floor 2, and Mod Roof. As you can see, having all these layers on all at once creates a very confusing visual. Being able to control the visibilities of layers individually makes simplifying the view very easy. However, there's more that layers are capable of. In the organization dialog box, for the moment, we'll cover just two of the many important characteristics that layers offer, stacking order and elevation. Stacking order is simple. It determines the order, in top plane view only, that objects on different layers are displayed. All objects will have a number in this column, which is indicated with a pound sign. One being stacked on the very top, with each lower number being that place underneath it. So in our example, the mod roof would be on top and numbered one, and the mod foundation layer would be on the bottom, numbered four. If I change this stacking order and move mod floor one to the first in the stacking order, it will appear over top of the mod roof layer and the second floor in top plan, even though it remains in the same position in a 3D view. Elevation is the height the objects will default to on that specific layer. As seen here, the Mod Floor 1 layer is on the ground with an elevation of 0. Mod Floor 2, being the second floor of the house, is 11 feet off the ground, and the roof is above that at 13 feet 6 inches. 
If I change the elevation of one or more of these layers, my objects will move accordingly, allowing me to easily adjust the height of floors or a roof without having to manually move every object one at a time. Here, I'll increase the elevation of mod floor 2 and mod roof by 3 feet each. Once I click OK, you can see that only these two layers have moved, but that every object on them has moved. Now that we've seen what classes and layers can do on their own, we'll cover the integration of the two. In many types of files, you may want to see certain types of objects based on their locations. Here is an example, we want to see only the walls on the first floor. I can disable all layers other than the first floor then disable all classes and enable only the class that contains the exterior walls. This is one way of changing the visibilities of multiple classes or layers. I hold down the Alt or Option key, then click in the column to change all layers. Another way of managing visibilities of multiple class and layers is called Class and Layer Options, which is covered in another video. If I now want to see the walls on the second floor, I need only change the visibility of the layers since my classes are already set to allow me to see only exterior walls. This can be just as easily done with any kind of object. Here I can switch it to display only the doors in the first floor or only objects contained within the roof class. This works both in 2D and 3D, giving me a very clean grade or complete cutaway look in either case. Classes and design layers are indispensable tools for document organization. Knowing how to use them and what they're for is integral for getting the most out of Vectorworks.